put on this. Okay. Hopefully somebody started leaf blowing just now. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. I can't hear it. Okay, just me. Let's take a deep breath. Oh, well, yes, welcome, welcome from all around, you know, the great circle here that we're sitting together around the Sooth cards. It's an honor that you're all here. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I'm really excited to be doing this and to to chat with you all. And yeah, it feels like we're making a kind of web around the world. And um, Sylvia and I already know a little of, of what we're going to be sharing with you. So um, that feels really exciting and potent as well. So mm. yeah, well, welcome and thank you everyone for coming wherever you are. Yeah. So I think the way we wanted to start was actually that we were going to kind of just take a moment to um, actually draw a card, draw two cards, yeah. right? We're going to draw um, okay. for yes. the, and then, so we'll do kind of like a group reading, just so you get a feeling for Sooth, um, and also just kind of see what Sooth wants to say to all of us this evening. So here we have... Um, the the prototype deck <laughs> really the only one sylvia has another one which is even more sort of hand cobbled isn't it there yeah. are no others yet um so um this is the one that we've been working with and that we've been um learning and conversing with and really figuring out what what this thing is that we've created um it's going to be about this size in in reality um but not cut out by hand with scissors. <laughs> Paste that we glued. Yeah. By <laughs> That's the one I have is cut yeah. And glued. Yeah. Um, and I've sorted them into two piles here. So, um, so we have two two within within the cards. We have two sets of cards, um, and maybe you want to tell a little of that, Sylvia, yeah. or do we, should we wait till afterwards? What these what these two. Um, the two different parts to it are. I mean, I think we can just very, very, just sort of generally introduce them at the moment. Um, yeah. that there's nine Our Ladies, and we sort of imagine them like a major and minor arcana in a way in the tarot, except also this is completely not like the tarot, but just mm -hmm. to have that sense of some cards that are kind of more archetypal or like, as we call them, temples that you enter. And then a, a set of 19, which were the first cards that we did, that we call um, the ways and um... the, the, the nine um, Our Lady cards are, are have a real, very different feel to them. And they had a little bit more, um, we, we conferred a little bit more in their creation. They came second, actually. The way cards are the ones that were created first, these 19, and these are they feel very strange and very old um, and very excitingly potent. Mm -hmm. And together, um, this this kind of wildness and this sense of sanctuary really creates um, a, a, a complete kind of arc of, of a reading. And the readings that we've um, come up with are, are very simple, actually. They... Um, they just include one of these cards and two of these cards. But I think for this evening, unless we take different directions, we're just going to pull one of each. And then Sylvia will read um, her writing that goes with each card so that you get a sense of the flavour of what this thing is. Um, and the idea really is that we have, we lay them out in a, in a three formation. So we have like a triangular formation of three circles um, in the middle at the top is the card um, that comes from the Our Lady deck so that is the sanctuary that we are heading towards and that is welcoming us in the 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 sucker and the the place of um that almost like the 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 energetic field that is welcoming us that we need in this moment of our question and then on the left-hand side, 
we have one of the way cards that describes the energy of what we're arriving with. So we call it the way in. And then the one on the right is the energy that we will be leaving this sanctuary, this chapel with, and we call it the way on. So it's sort of a little bit like we're on a journey where we're, we're in a story um, and we're, we're making our way to this place in the woods and we are um, asking really deep questions of the of the um, the character that we meet there. Um, the first card tells us a little bit about what we're bringing in our bag, and the second card tells us a little bit about what we're taking away in our bag. Perhaps mm. very very easily described, or perhaps as well, you know, what um, where we've been coming from, what's brought us in to the t to the to the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. This is sometimes how they feel for me when I pull them that. Oh yes, this is the the place that I've been on my path has walked mm -hmm. me here. And then the way the, the way on card can feel like, oh yes, and that yes, that is the thing I need in order to keep going, in order to um take the next step. And I think we we created them this way because just to add on a little bit, because those first 19, when we did the first 19, you know, six years ago now they came through so intuitively and with such a wild um a wildness to them but also this sense of a very much the sense of a journey that um needed needed sanctuary along the way needed grounding because otherwise it just felt like um uh one could just be wandering kind of following this thread of the path um sort of around and around and so to come back into the centering of a sanctuary to take a breath on the journey was just a good reminder for us I think and then also it made the cards um just come to life in a different way it's like they just worked mm -hmm. in a new way so um, yes we the the I guess most of you have read about the the way that we've created this deck in an extremely um intuitive and um a sort of a creative process that involved a lot of trust where we where we sat beside each other and worked but we did not plan what was going to come we knew we were going to create some sort of divinatory tool that we were going to call it sooth we did decide that at the mm -hmm. beginning but beyond that there was no plan so we really just opened the doors to whatever spirit wanted to come in um, and somehow when we work together when we work alongside each other something happens that's really magic and something about our worlds um cross over and mix in a in a particularly beautiful way and so the 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 19 cards that came first were um you know i was painting and sylvia was writing but we didn't know what the other was doing we were you know you could sort of glimpse over there that what the other person was doing but we really didn't know there was and it was just a process of letting imagery for me, just letting imagery come out, and for Sylvia, letting okay. words come out, and and the, the the matching of the words to the cards came afterwards. And so, as we've, I mean, we can talk about this in more depth later. But the this process was so sort of, yeah, wild and and alive in its in its unknownness that, as Sylvia said, the 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 sanctuary cards were in fact um named we we just chose their names before and so it was a little bit the other way around it had a little bit more of a, a, a starting ground we still worked in a similar way but um yeah they had we, we decided on the nine yeah. names we beforehand we knew what we were doing at the same we were doing the same thing at the same time we were and i think i actually think that doing those nine helped us um make sense of what the cards were like I was saying that we were so in the intuitive side of the 19 that creating mm -hmm. them helped um uh helped us see what we had created if that makes sense um yeah and and you'll see with the readings you know and the cards that it was very uncanny that yeah. how they how they worked it was very uncanny it is very uncanny and and because they they do work even though they're completely 
you know, silent, it was a silent process between the two of us just, and Rima, most of the time, as I remember you were, I couldn't, I guess I had a slight advantage because I could see things sort of <laughs> vaguely emerging on your paper, but I tried really hard to be good and like, not like, look at them, you know, and also I couldn't really see what you were doing because there was so much just sketching and moving between different things. So I didn't, there was very much the sense that we were in one field beyond what we could see. Mm -hmm. I was also having these, like, um, as you've maybe seen from a couple little samples we've shared, and as you'll hear, I was having these strange rhyming, almost charms come to me that I've never had before or since happen in that way. And so it just felt like we were, yeah, we'd stepped through a doorway together, but we couldn't really look, you know, you can't look too closely. Just Yeah. And once it's begun, you sort of, you just know, you know, you have to keep going and, 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 you know, that it needs to all come through and we need, you know, it's sort of this precious fizzing moment that you have to, let this uncanny stuff come through and the and the process afterwards of matching as Sylvia said you know is, was super uncanny because we hadn't decided that this card was going to go with this bit of writing until afterwards when we looked through all of it and found that there were echoing symbols and and ideas and feelings in in the pieces of writing and in the cards that obviously meant that one had to go with that one and that, that one had to go with that one it was a very strange an unusual process but really yeah definitely fizzing and just just to say a final thing that you know to this day we still I think every time we pull them or read them you say did I paint that I don't remember <laughs> <laughs> really and I read it and I say did I actually write I don't even where did that come from so yeah and that I think as artists is also um, such a gift to have that feeling it's yeah. it's a gift to be able to to step into that place it doesn't always happen um so easily but yeah yeah it's and it continues to happen doesn't it even you know it's 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 very strange it's a very strange experience you know even looking at them I I I feel like somebody else. Did. I mean, I can see it's my my work. I see, I can see it's from my paintbrush, but it doesn't feel mm -hmm. like, you know, it's it's got this sense that it came from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Can I see? Oh, I'm just gonna mute somebody. Okay. Hold on, doing some muting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Pull a card. Yes. Let's just see which lady. Let's do one lady and one. We go for the Our Ladies first, okay. I'll get them ready. Handle. Close. Maybe it's, do it this way, and then you can you can have glimpses of them. Oh yeah. Ooh. <laughs> mm. Wait here. Bring it a little more center. There we go. I'm gonna um. I'm gonna unspotlight myself so everybody can just really see the card. There you go. All right. This is Our Lady of the Ember Bed. Hmm. Our Lady of the Ember Bed. At the center of the world is a very great light and a very great warmth. At the center of the world is a hearth as old as time, deep set in stone. In it is a well-built fire. Logs of olive and almond and oak have become an ember bed. The ember bed is bright and rich and thigh deep in the old hearth. It dances with heat. Worlds rise and fall across the surfaces of the embers. Long lost eons move in veins of purple and blue. There are auroras, forgotten scripts, deserts, ocean floors. Here in this hearth is the smoldering of a longing that survives lifetimes. Again and again in every one of us, it is born. Pigment swirls through the ember bed, ochres from the palette of the first human art in the world. It's hot enough to fire clay vessels watertight, hot enough to smelt copper into rings, 
pure enough to turn silver into gold. Our Lady of the Ember Bed is the hearth itself. Her heart and her womb shine with embers. Her hands shape clay and metal. They cradle the alembic of creation, the radiance curled up in seeds. In all things that are conceived, creation spark what makes the bread rise, the beautiful pattern that is taking shape under a painter's hands, the fertilized egg in all mothers, Robin mothers, river otter mothers, herons, grass snakes, honeybees, seals, snow geese, humans. Here, in Our Lady of the Ember Bed, is the egg and the ember, the bursting forth, the organizing principle, the rhythm under the rhythm that makes a poem sing, that makes a story carry God. Our Lady of the Ember Bed knows what you were longing to give birth to, she knows the rhythms of your gestation. She knows the origin of your desire. When you create from this origin, from this desire, over and over again, the world is saved by beauty and by love. Michelangelo paints the Sistine Chapel. A storyteller sings the epic of the Rama Ramayana over seven hot nights. A coast Miwok weaver feathers an offering basket with the iridescent clay of hummingbirds. A mother births a child into the heartbreak glory of this world. A hand paints lionesses on the torch lit walls of Chauvet. Our Lady of the Ember Bed offers you an ember now. She sets it in your own hearth to relight what has gone out in you. She sets her warm hands on your belly, on your head, on your heart. She pours her alembic into you, a shining holy gold. Create, she sings in you. Create, create, create. Birth again and again the beauty and the hope of this world. That's so beautiful. beautiful. Seems suitable. And very excellent. I know. Mm. In case, in case you're wondering what I asked, what I just you? asked what needed, what wanted to be spoken here in in this meeting of of all of us. So mm. there we go. That's that's a message for mm. for, for us all. Wonderful. Wait, Bla Blair, are you raising your hand on purpose? Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. I, um, I, the world will be saved by beauty and what is more beautiful than love mm. is a quote from Dostoevsky's novel, The Idiot. Um, and then it goes on. Um, the quote is also associated with Dorothy Day, who was a social activist and founder of the Catholic Worker. Day is said to have loved the quote and added, those who do not believe in God, they believe in love. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. yeah I think we should have the next okay, let's have the next okay so let's see our our way hi oops ah uh, Interesting. This one likes to this come out in our okay in our recording in our video. She likes to emerge. Hold on, I'm just pouring another cup on for my reading here. Okay. Mm. Okay. Hold on a minute. Let me find her. Maybe we need to do a three cards, Sylvia. Maybe this can be the way in. Yeah. I think you're right. Um, there we go. Yes. So just to um, explain how these way cards work a little bit. Um, and Rima, actually, I do you mind muting yourself while I'm reading? Because I think I'm getting a slight bit of feedback just for the recording. Cool. And I'll just, just in case. 
anybody else's um just for the feedback okay just checking because it can be a little bit okay um so the the way the way cards work um in the first round of writing when we were doing these 19 like i was saying these very uncanny rhyming songs kind of came out spoken songs um that were absolutely um in some ways incomprehensible to me but deeply intuitive um and so what happened then so i did i did those 19 spell songs basically that just came out with this rhythm that i could hear inside of me as we were working together and then I went back through each one, and this was still while while Rima was um, painting, before we discussed anything. But I went back through each one, and I wrote um, what I'm called what I call the threads that are a little bit more clarifying divination. So the first part is the spin. If you imagine um, the spinning motion of thread being made, that spinning rhythm of these charm songs that were coming through. So that's part one of the reading of each card and then part two is the threads that kind of brings the fibers together in the reading so that's just just so you know what's going on um i'm just checking Sylvia, just before you start mm -hmm. ask everyone to mute themselves or do you have the capacity to do that as i'm going through to mute people yeah there we go i think it's good now <laughs> i just went through the list yeah but yeah if you notice that you're not muted just for now because it creates challenging feedback in people's um, ears. <laughs> and then there'll be time to chat and unmute. Okay, so this card is called Morning Chords. It's card number 13. Um, this part is the spin. Leaf fall and Galstra woke the ringing. Ring around the land stone, ring around the well. There they come in sorrow, where water rang and fell. Fish net he nodded, fish charm she hummed. Galstra how she loved him, that man of shade and dell. Galstra how she lost him, raveling what swelled. Owl called the night in, cuckoo called the morn. Dormouse made the dream crack, hazel shone the dawn. And Galstra stood the stone long, for he would come by star O, and she would let him go. Now this is the thread. Let go now. Mark your cheeks with the lines of loss. The way the leaves fall makes a language of release. Let go of what is not alive. Let fall what is heavy. Songs of morning carry the chords of time, and in time the notes of return and destiny ring. Let go, leaves fall, what is coming through the trunk and sap cannot be, be seen but must be trusted. Do not obstruct what is falling, but mourn it in order to make the falling complete. Leaf fall under the tree's root is the only way to cross into the coming season. The water is full of fall. Trust what is going and trust what will come. This is feeling like a personal reading, Rima. For me. <laughs> oh, you're muted. You're muted. Yes, I think it might feel like that for everyone in, in some way. Oh, yeah. It's like, woo. <laughs> Try not to cry while I'm reading. Okay. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, good. Oh. Seeing, oh, everyone's like very a personal moved. reading. Okay. I but, thought this might happen. <laughs> oh, gosh. Bless you all. Yeah. Oh, literally. Right, is everyone ready for the third card? Let's get that third card. Come on, get us, <laughs> get us out. <laughs> yeah. Mm. 
Mm. Mm. Right. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, I, I almost feel like I literally had this reading the other day. This is wild. Sooth. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So this is card 19 and it's called Old Ones Dancing. So here's the spin first. Try not to cry. <laughs> Unravel at the threshold. The bark is thick with night. Door of deep and power, she asks to stop the fight. Ages pour down through her. Time take hold his hand. Right is a wheel evergreen. Right is a star falling bright and clean. Hold the thresh, leap the bone fire. On the far side, wait the ones whose forms they've always carried. On the mound of the dead, they go praying, counting stars and what will fall. From the mounds of the dead, they are listening. The ones who know are near. The ones of clan and hoping, the ones, the ones of future's turn. Hold her, fill her, know her. Save him, trust him, wait. Here come old ones dancing. Tend the holy gate. And then the thread. On the mounds of the dead, your newborn is brought to be blessed. Out of death, life. The moon carries her own darkness and is always dying and being born at once. From this portal, the wise ones speak. From this opening and the moon's face, scry what is complete in yourself and offer thanks. With these eyes, you can see in total darkness. Trust what you can see in total darkness. There are elders who would guide you so that what you have kindled finds its way to the full light of consciousness. Let them help you open this portal. Seek the most ancient, quiet, and kind. Here are the thresholds. Make space for benevolent and helpful primordial spirits to open the gate between ages. Rest in completion, begin. Well, Oof. that, um, yeah, <laughs> it's like, like we were saying, every time I read them, I get knocked a little bit sideways. Um, me too. Forget that. I guess the truth is we were the conduits for this, but mm. it's a mystery mm -hmm. and, and benevolent a benevolent, powerful mystery that arrived. And it does feel like, you know, every time we do a reading, we say, Sooth did it again. It's, you know, we are not sideways. <laughs> oh, everyone, everyone. Yeah, bless you all. Hey, lovely words. Um, yeah, and I, I feel like that happened again just there. And it I, it does feel I, like, um, sorry. I suspect it might feel like a personal reading for all of us, but also somehow for you and I, in terms of our, our bringing forth of this very thing, it's kind of like a, a meta reading. It is. Yeah. The, yes. The walking through all the, all the um, lettings go that we both had to walk through. Mm -hmm. to create and now birth this. Um, mm -hmm. And I think also, actually, I'm just reflecting on what this moment in the world feels like right now mm. um, in terms of great grief and loss and 
just a great grieving that is needed ongoingly at the moment. It just keeps feeling like it keeps getting worse. And in the midst of that, the reminder to sit down at the great hearth inside of each of us and make and create beauty with all that we are. And yeah. to look deeply into the ones who, you know, the ancestors and ones who stand behind us and beside us and with us. Absolutely. Um, the the way it reminds you, I find, every time we do a reading is is so... It just gets right in, in a way that other, uh, it's so different from other oracles that I've experienced that its particular voice is very, very old, but also very, very on the nail always. And, and we would recommend as we've, as we've noticed, you don't, you can't really pull, well, you, you can do whatever you like, but um, pulling them daily doesn't really seem to. No. <laughs> Where it's They're really long. Yeah, it's really full on. It's like it's like when you really need it. And I think also when you do them daily, she's like, just give you the same card every time. Because, you know, it's like just um I already told you, stop asking. There's um, there's plenty of richness to be sitting with for a while, isn't there, each time you do a reading. You don't need to be knocked over every day by um uh the like yeah messages anyways i want to make sure that we have oh we have time just uh, yeah if um if there are questions conversation just if we want to open mm -hmm. it up a little bit um to questions or anything else um question okay so Taylor is asking, do you have a sense of the lineage, lineages in you that are informing this collaboration um, slash deck? Start with that. Wow. Um, Question. Not really sure how to answer that. Um, you know, I suppose on one hand, there's, you know, our own personal stories of lineage and, and how that relates to our art making. Um, but I think as we've already touched on and as we've realised the more we've worked with this thing that we've made, there's there's a, quite an other lineage or, 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 or thread or ancestry within the cards that may or may be ours or we may share in it or may we may not. But it's it almost feels like it's of the land mm -hmm. or of somehow... It's it's got it's got a very sort of Paleolithic sense to it, hasn't it? It's it feels um it feels like this this voice coming up from the the layers of the the rocks and the 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 sediment underneath our feet and and in that sense, yeah, it's it's I don't know if I mean we created it in Devon, so I don't know if it's of this place in terms of, you know, the the old, old peoples of this particular land or whether it's an ancient nest, it was the sediment is within us. I, I'm not I'm not very sure. Yeah. It's it sort of almost feels the archaeology of it is very is is sort of almost too old to tell. Um it may be that the more we speak with it, the more we'll sense i don't know that's yeah Do i would you have any any thoughts sylvia yeah. well that's beautifully said rima i think that answers it quite well and also i would i think one thing is that you know the way you and i both work is that um it's what we were speaking to that feeling of simply sitting down and opening the whatever place opens to allow the the rhythm of the words and the rhythm of the images to come through it's um it's so non-verbal in a way and so non like linear actually, or in, um, it, even though it is verbal for me because I'm writing that I've never, I don't know, I have never been able to put a specific like channeling practice or lineage description upon it. But I think that what you were saying is that something about the meeting of what both of us carry in our bloodlines connected with what we carry in our 
souls, some of which we know, some of which we don't connected also with, I would say the writing of those 19, um, they came forth from me after spending about a month with you in Dartmoor, sleeping quite close to the earth, being, you know, um, meeting some of those great stones for the first time and meeting the more, not for the first time, but really connecting in more deeply for the first time. And so I did have the sense with those particularly that something of that land is definitely in it for me that, and they taught me about the land there, but I don't know. They just, I don't know what it is. It's just that way that words come through me connected to land. But then I will just add that when I went on a kind of motherline pilgrimage up to East Yorkshire with my mom a, a year ago for the first time and encountered Neolithic and megalithic and like Mesolithic traces in the land there and felt that land, I had this very strange sense of Sooth being very close again there. In that mm -hmm. land, I understood something about that place because of what had come through in Sooth. And so I think it will keep developing, like you're saying. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I feel like there are related questions to this. Hold on, I just wanted to see because there was, there was Sylvia asking, I'm wondering how you channeled while you were working. And I just mm -hmm. um, think that there was one other. Oh, and Cheryl asked, does it reflect what religion you are in the way you read it? Mm, interesting. Um, just the yeah, ch channeling, yeah. I think, I mean, you know, it, it's, an, it's an interesting sort of wider conversation, this, I suppose, about, you know, lineage and belonging and, and traditions and how that feeds into your creative practice and and what you're reaching for in your creative practice as well because you know I have had the experience of, pe of all my life people have asked me where I'm from um, because of what they see in my work and there's a you know that I have my own personal exploration about about you know ancestry and so on um, that's that's more sort of centered around kind of east and southeast Europe I, and that but I feel like looking which I can see in in my work and that's you know it's a it's a complicated conversation isn't it because it you know how much of our our, our life now you know is reflected in our in in very far back ancestries but what's interesting in this arrangement of imageries um is that i i see something quite different actually it feels quite you know in, in if i compare it to my other work i can see my own um my my paintbrush in there but i can't it, it does feel like you're saying it feels like it's or, or it's got the granite in it you know it's got the mm -hmm. um voices coming out of the earth here so so that's that's what I'm really sort of interested in deciphering what 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 sort of ancestry comes through in, in the different ways that we work. And when we work in this kind of channeling, um, you know, where, where we're just opening the doors to, to the spirit that wants to come through, what what is it that's happening? You know, because. I often work in in a similar sort of way, you know, very unplanned painting and letting letting things come through. But but at different times, it may be that different sorts of spirit wants to make itself known, you know. And and sometimes there's something about my own story, my own ancestries, and my own journeys of discovery that's coming through. And sometimes it's about something else. And I feel like what Sylvia and I did here was that we we crossed our paths in, in various different ways. And so we crossed, mm -hmm. whether we crossed ancestries or, or, or stories or, our, or something about our collective creative, creative endeavor made something happen that was other. Yeah. I think that's, I, I think it's a, it is a blend. It's really a blend of, yeah. of us. And so, and um, I think, I think, also, I just want to say that I really do think that all creative work is channeled. I, you mm. know, the concept of channeling, like I've never thought, 
I've been writing my whole life since I was a little girl and I didn't really think of it ever as an act of ch channeling. I think that would have scared me when I was younger. Like, ah, I don't want to be channeling. I just like, that's, that's intense. Like I, you know, I just, it's, it's a connection with a, with a rhythm of creative, like tone for me is what it feels like mm -hmm. that I hear and, and it has a certain feeling quality that I don't know that I could ever articulate. And that's my, that's my wave that I just write in, you know? And so I think that at the root of all of it, it's really just, that's where this came from and whatever, every single layer of each, you know, Rima and I that creates the body, the vessel, the soul, the brain, you know, that is bringing that wave through. Um, and these are such beautiful comments, all of them. Um, I, I am interested in the, the question about religion. Um, I mean, I think it connects, doesn't it? There, um, does it reflect what religion you are in the way you read it? I mean, I... Um, oh, do you mean, does this person mean in, in, in the way that if they're doing a reading, do, can... It, does it put another lens on it if they have their own personal religion? Perhaps that's I think what maybe meant. Cheryl, is that what you yeah. are asking? Um, let's see. Yes, yes, she okay. says. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like the the lovely thing about what what we've created here is that it, it it's it's very translatable as well. It's not it's not specific in terms of its, you know any there's there's no there's no particular god or goddess named or or you, you know the 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 themes are very are very universal and ancient and um i guess there's i don't know sylvia what do you think well i'm just thinking about our lady which you know obviously there's the our yeah, lady feeling that that has the christian um uh you know virgin mary yeah Feeling, which is where the inspiration for that came from and certainly I have a relationship with her however I am not Christian um and so it's a little bit um um the way I see just just in that sense in case that I've I've wondered about this potentially being upsetting for people who are Christian or um or not but um the way I see our lady you know I think from spending time living in Crete, what I found was that when I would encounter the Virgin Mary, you know, icons of her in ancient caves, for example, cave chapels, what it felt to me was that she held in her skirts um, all the feminine divine goddesses that had come before her in that place and that she was kind of the latest manifestation in a way holding this like deep lineage of um earth's san sanctity and sanctuary in those places and because those icons were still being worshipped there was this power and aliveness to to them and to naming her as such our lady of our lady of this our lady of that in greek there and so that just became a very personal um um sanctuary for me and so that's that's kind of where that came from in the deck however these are like these are ladies are pan you know religious they're all they can hold they're they're meant to hold all um possibilities of faith or belief like they can be fit in wherever you want them to or, or not you know yeah also, I feel like um, that there's a layer to it which is relevant. That's about about folk belief, and yeah. I think um, that that that's that's something else. That 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 is a um, it's it's a collective experience. You know, it we, it's, belongs to us all. At this, you know, a, a folk spirituality, and it's what you see in in countries where they still have an active um, religious conversation with with saints in caves and on waysides and where there's you know where there's there are offerings left and statues touched um by people who you know whose whose belief is 
it's it's much more day to day perhaps and i feel like in the in the the embodiment of of the of the belief sort of ends up being ends up in the objects themselves so in the in the votive um offerings and in the little things that are hung on trees you know in what whichever religion we're speaking about but where there's that kind of folk practice of honoring places and trees and statues and um you know praying for healing and and all of so, all these sorts of things it's it's like the belief enters into the object and i mean i'm very interested in uh, you know this kind of relationship with iconography in this this way and what happens between a human and an object and what happens between a human and a, an image um and and i feel like that that's more of what we're talking about here you know this relationship between us and the and a, and a visual representation of a spiritual feeling of mm. spiritual idea what we might call a goddess mm. we, whatever you might name it it's it's about the relationship between the two things and that's that's a folk religion for me so that and that belongs to everyone and it doesn't you know it it it's, gets put through a christian lens in some places in other places um through a muslim one or a jewish one you know depending where you are in the world it can be it it, it can its names can be different but it's the it's the fundamental um relating between us and the the numinous yeah and and the earth and ancestors you know it's yeah. like we combine that relationship to the numinous to the yeah. ground where we are and to the ones who we come from and who are in the ground where we are mm -hmm. that's that's the ground that this is yeah leaning into and that we both i think orient just, spiritually sylvia and rima yes. i just wanted to say i love your use of the circle because to me that unifies all religions i mean mm. you mentioned creed i i've read a little about you and rima and i'm inspired um and the circle or you know inside that circle is the you know the equilateral cross and it was used long before christianity to mm -hmm. represent the four seasons, stuff that you guys already know. I don't know, but I've always been obsessed. I'm not Christian either, but I love all different um, uh, flavors of spirituality or whatever. But um, Mary to me always symbolized a mother's grief or loss. Mm -hmm. So I found your inspiration interesting, you know, how you see her. Yeah. Thank you, Blair. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mary holds so much that <laughs> I like um, could spend the whole hour talking about, I feel like, but um, I think the grief is part of a huge part of what she holds, but also so much more. And in that way of the, of the folk religious icons that we've been talking about and what you know her skirts for thousands of years have gathered from all of them um and it's interesting what you say about the circle as well because that's that feels fundamental to and that's came early didn't it that decision yeah, that for them immediately to we knew we knew the word sooth because we were looking through at like um looking at different words for divination mm -hmm. and um we knew sooth and we knew round and what's interesting, look, I'll, I'm just going to make you all feel dizzy for a second and move my phone so you can see the cards that we drew um, laying on the table here. Um, mm -hmm. And what's interesting is we have, they, they come in this this pattern. Can you see okay? Yeah. It's a um, little, yeah. We have the um, Our Lady card here and then the two way cards at the bottom. Mm. And then, so so yeah. Then there's then there's this, this interesting shape as well, which feels potent as well in terms of yeah. And you know what I just I just realized um, that those two cards together have the they the old ones dancing looks like it's gone. Yes. Well, that yeah. Just so there's so much more that you know when each of you actually have these decks in your hands. I'm so excited to see, yeah, look at, that's wild. Um, see the ways that um, your intuitions respond as well to the imagery, to the feeling of the three of them together in a reading like that. 
and yeah. to the birds dancing with it, dancing between. And also, so KS has asked, can you please say again the names of the way cards you pulled for the group reading? So yes. So um the first one was the one with the violin um shape on the side, and that's called morning chords, like M-O-U-R-N, morning. And then um the second one was the old ones dancing. Um and the the temple, the sanctuary, the house, we're calling them the houses, right? <laughs> I can't remember. Um, that's Our Lady of the Ember Bed. Um, any other questions? That thing, you, you or did we miss see? any? Oh, Jennifer, Rudston Monolith in, yes, Yorkshire. That's a, that I, That's one of the places I was talking about. That's amazing. You live near there. It's very potent place. When will they be ready for purchase? So they're ready for purchase now. Like, so the, um, we're taking pre-orders basically, but the pre-orders are funding the print cost. Um, oh, okay. Hold on, Christine, just a second. Um, so yeah, order now. And then the sooner we kind of complete that, you know, the sooner we'll be shipping. I mean, we will be shipping in November, basically. So in time for Christmas, most places, I should hope. Yes, um, fingers crossed. I mean, you, yeah, I mean, who knows? you, you never know what happens with printing, but, you know, everything's Ideally. pretty ready to go. So we, we just need the money to pay the printers. And that's what we're doing here with the, the pre-orders. Um, and, you know, if we can reach our target, that will really make this possible for, for us to get it out into the world they as uh, what we're going to do are they shipping from the uk cheryl asked we're gonna we're gonna split it so they'll be printed in the uk and then um i'll send a big box over to sylvia and she'll ship from the us so hopefully the shipping costs won't be as okay yeah each side they won't you know they'll they'll not be as exorbitant as if they were shipping only from the uk that's the plan at the moment anyway. Um, and also Christine's asking any luck getting Indiegogo to accept. Okay, so so the APO addresses. Um, I cannot get the shipping now to change. They lock like um, the shipping arrangements once you've set it. Right. I don't know how to get them to accept, um, Christine, but so maybe we can figure out something on the side. And yeah, we, maybe send us a yeah. message and we can we'll, figure we'll out. We'll work something out for you that's not through yeah. Indiegogo for now. I'm really sorry about that. It's, it's, there are things about that platform that aren't ideal for some of this, but just in terms of gathering the funds to print them and everything, it's, it's great, but this is stuff like this is a downside or just they don't make let you make a lot of changes of any kind um so yeah thank you um messages patreon instagram email email i would say is that same for you where do you prefer to receive messages i Sylvia? prefer email yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and i can put i'll put my email again here and then we can also put um and we can put Rima, you can put yours too and then also let's get the link for Ooh, find the link for our yeah good parts let me just um go find that um okay i have the link there it, there's my email Okay, and there's the link. And um, did we Amazing. miss any questions that were burning? Um, I'm just looking. We'll share the link. There. Okay. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you to everyone who's ordered. So much cool. to everybody who's ordered. It's like just wonderful. We're. S I mean, it's so exciting. I think I kind of can't quite believe still that we're finally gonna have them in our hands, yeah. the little bags and the book printed and yeah. I have to say that um, I've 
for those of you who don't know, I've just had a, a, an exhibition of my work, which just finished last week. And at that exhibition, I had the original paintings of the Sooth cards all displayed on on a on the, a big table, long table, wooden table in the centre of the room under glass. So people could see the original paintings. And then I had this prototype deck on a little round table so that people could play and really meet the meet Sooth. Um, and it was really fascinating to see the way people responded um, because initially, I mean, o overall, there was this this sort of immense response of, of people saying how strong they felt the the energy of it was. Um, but people tended to feel drawn to one or two cards specifically. Mm. And then often, several times this happened, they would sit down at the table and, and um, shuffle the cards and they would pull the same cards that they'd been drawn to on the on the table of paintings. Um, and obviously at the exhibition, there were no, Sylvia's words were not there. So this was just, um, this was just a, um, a, a sort of visual reading and people were, were intuitively understanding the cards. Um, and I would tell them the names of the cards if they asked, but um, yeah, it was really, really beautiful. And then on several occasions, there were these impromptu gatherings of people. I would turn around and there was a whole gaggle of people sitting around the table together, reading the cards um, together in a, in a group. Um, sometimes children as well. It was very beautiful to see, mm. and 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 the the way that people responded on on seeing the cards and seeing the images close up, um, it, it was it was very moving. You know that the because you know as, as the artist and I was doing it alone, Sylvia was not there. So so you know as the artist only um, of the of the visuals, you know you. you you have a sense of your own work, but you know I, I get a lot from from feedback from people, you know, and, and sort of hearing from people how my work lands with them. Um, and this this was very affirming, but it also really particularly affirming of the strength and the sort of of this particular sooth voice that we've been talking about. Um, that other people could really feel that as well, um, and that's that's really exciting. So I started to get very excited about when these finally are printed and they're all landing on your doorsteps and when we start to hear back from you all what it what happens when you have mm -hmm. when you do readings and um, what they tell you I'm, I'm so excited to hear that I'm really you know we've just been it's just been you and me for six years so we're doing <laughs> without telling anyone <laughs> keeping it secret it was like only recently that I even really told anybody else about it because I was like no I can't, I can't I can't say the name it's like um and I just, somebody was asking, okay, oh, KS was asking again, um, do the do you feel the cards work better when pulled as a group of three versus a single card pull? And I think that mm -hmm. kind of to, to what Rima was just saying, I think intuitively, like it, it could be that a single card pull might work better for somebody than a three card pull. They just offer different things. I think like um, what we're learning is that they speak so specifically I think to each person and that that's going to be a journey for everybody who has them and I find just to to answer from my perspective about that that um there's a story and a, a structure of the story that really starts to happen and land with the three cards that when you enter when you and it takes some time to be sitting with them for that to really land but there's some movement that happens um with the three that is really like it feels like it provides me with a complete answer to something like a complete place to rest but there are also moments when pulling one card as a reflection could be exactly what you need so i think you know it works however um you're called to use them but um that the the three card movement is just what we came to as a structure to offer you in terms of the way the cards were communicating to us about what who they are you know yeah, it might be that that you know, with use that that people come up with with ways of using it that we haven't thought of, and that's exactly. exciting. I can't. Um, yeah. Oh, just thank you all for your lovely um, messages. Um, we will be printing more than the amount of the pre-orders. So the part of the purpose of the crowd. Hopefully.
that's the idea. The idea is yeah. that the cost that we're raising is so that we can really print, do a good first print run, because obviously the more we can print it once we bring the overall cost down. So that's a good thing. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully we, we it means then that there will be more for sale in our shops. There will be. But then this you is can just tell the... all your friends about and say, go to their shops and buy this this card deck because that's that's gonna also, you know, keep us in bread and butter for a few more weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh thank you, Becky. Um and maybe final question to speak to from Erica. Um do you have any idea of what we could do to prepare to meet Sooth? Oh, oh, that's a lovely question. That's so sweet. Um, I mean, I think you're. I think you're prepared <laughs> already. I think, um, just, yeah. I actually, I think, I think you're already prepared. I think she's here. They are here to just be, of um support and love and 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 nourishment to all of us in this time and i think if anything sooth is like oh my gosh girls this is taking you a long time <laughs> everybody's more than ready get them out there come on <laughs> i think also um you know just to say which maybe we didn't say is that the voice in in sooth feels very kind always um and you know genuinely so she's very um clear clear sighted but it's very kind you know and it's 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 a sort of a, a very held energy and answers that you receive um so yeah i'm and, yeah. i'm free i think everyone's ready i was just wondering whether anyone would, would I, fancy a quick another glimpse at a few cards yeah, hold the them up, yeah. and i want to also <laughs> say that as you hold them up that i think with sooth like just trust yourself, trust what you know and need. And that that's the answer, you know, to how to welcome them. Oh, there you go, yeah. Mm. Whoop, there I yeah. am. Oh wait, I'll move myself in case it's... We have my fire crackling. Mm -mm. I wish. <laughs> I mean, these ones we've seen already. And last but not least, the Our Ladies. These are, these are not in order, by the way. They're just randomly in a pile on my table. There's, oh, it's so wonderful to see them again. <laughs> I've seen them so many times. I'm so happy to see them again. Hmm. there we go oh perfect well, bless you all for these beautiful messages and for being here um feels like 
yeah, just a nourishing um, blessing upon the birth to have you here. Yeah, really lovely. I'm just reading these messages. Can we save these messages, Sylvia? Um, you ask as if I am the tech whiz. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm i moved by your confidence in me um, I don't know <laughs> anybody know wait let's see save chat oh okay it'll be somewhere yeah okay <laughs> okay I think that that is that is all oh it's really, really lovely to have you all here. Thank you for coming and for blessing this. Um, yeah, tell everybody. Tell everybody. <laughs> <Heard the word>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, enjoy your new weekends. Mm. Oh, it's hard to let everybody go. Okay, we better... <laughs> Thank you all for your really warm and lovely messages. It means a lot. It does, yeah. Okay. Hmm. All right. Good night, folks. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Good night. Are we wanting to just stay on for a moment here? Yeah. Thank you, Natalie. I um, wonder if I can close. Can you do that? I'll see. <laughs> uh, maybe people are just naturally... Um, I wonder if I can close and then reopen, or should we? No, we're, it's all right. We're nearly there. Look. It's like it's like being at a party, isn't it? Where you're <laughs> saying goodbye to people at the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're looking for their car keys and <laughs> wait a minute, stumbling down the garden path. <laughs> Oh, I'll end the recording. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs>